Hi, Nathan here. Today we're going to cover five topics that will give you a solid foundation for learning to play the bass guitar. Make sure you download the PDF, Guitar Pro, and backing track for this lesson, which I've linked down below. Before we begin, just a quick blurb about me since this is our first lesson. I'm a graduate of the Berklee College of Music, and as a professional bass player, I've done sessions with multi-platinum producers, I've toured over 20 countries, and I've played bass on recordings with some incredible musicians. All right, the five topics we're covering today are the parts of the bass, how to hold the bass, tuning, playing finger style, and tabs, also known as tablature. The parts of the bass. Here we have the headstock, which supports the tuners. Our strings run from the tuners to the nut and then across the neck. These are frets and fret markers, which serve as reference points to help you move around the neck more quickly and accurately. The neck connects to the body, where we have the bridge, pickups, and control knobs. Typically, the first knob controls volume, and the rest will affect the tone of your bass in a variety of ways, specific to your bass model. Lastly, we have the output jack, where you connect your instrument cable first, and then plug into the amp to avoid loud pops. How to hold the bass. Holding the bass properly will allow you to play longer and prevent strain. I'll cover two ways to hold the bass when sitting, and then we'll go over proper strap height for standing. If you're using a left-handed bass, just mirror me on this entire section. The first sitting option is the casual posture. Rest the curve of the lower body on your right leg and have the back of the bass snug against your torso. Rest your forearm lightly on the body with your fingers just over the strings. Press your left thumb against the neck and rest your fingers on the strings. The headstock should be elevated and both your wrists should be straight and relaxed. Next, we have the classical posture. Rest the base on your left leg and elevate the headstock slightly higher. This gives you easier access to the upper neck region. For standing, put your head and right arm through the strap so that it rests on your left shoulder. I suggest using a strap with a minimum width of two and a half inches for better support. The base should hang in a position that keeps your wrists straight and relaxed. If your left wrist is flexing upwards uncomfortably, the base might be too low. If your right wrist is flexing downwards uncomfortably, the base is either too high or you need to lift your forearm. Take some time to find the perfect height because it makes a big difference in preventing strain. Tuning. If your bass is out of tune, it won't sound right. And there are many factors that can affect your tuning, like temperature, humidity, the string settling in, taking your bass in and out of its case, so be sure to tune often. The bass is tuned E, A, D, G. Let's start with the E string, and I'm gonna use a free app called Pano Tuner. Pluck the string with your right hand and adjust the tuner with your left. If the red line is left of E, the string is flat and needs to be tightened. If the red line is to the right, it's sharp and needs to be loosened. If it's not near E at all, look at the Hertz readout. We want this string to be 41.2 Hertz. If it's higher than that, loosen the string. If it's lower, tighten it. The last adjustment should be a tightening of the string for better stability. Next, we have the A string at 55 Hertz. The D string at 73.4 Hertz. This one is sharp, so I'll tune it down past the D and then back up. and the G string at 98 hertz. Now we're ready to play. Playing finger style. Finger style is the most common way of playing the bass, and the technique itself has been used on other instruments for millennia. Rest your left hand fingers across the A, D, and G strings. 
This will keep them from vibrating while we play the E string for a cleaner and more focused sound. Now anchor the tip of your thumb on the neck pickup and pluck the E string, alternating between your index and middle fingers, like this. Together, one, two, three, four. Are your hands relaxed and feeling good, or are they tensing up? If they're tense, just take a deep breath and loosen up those wrists. Now continue playing, and as you do, let's cover a few mechanics. If you're using the very tips of your fingers to pluck, use the fleshier parts instead for a fuller tone. Also, each finger should pluck the string with equal intensity and at the same point on the string. This will give a more consistent tone. By contrast, notice how the tone changes if we strike different points of the string, even when using the same finger and pressure. Interesting, right? If you're plucking into the air like so, pluck towards your thumb instead. This improves economy of motion, allowing you to play faster and with less effort. If you want to keep practicing this section, definitely go ahead. All right, moving on to the A string. Your left hand will mute the D and G strings, your thumb will stay anchored on the neck pickup, and your ring and pinky finger will now rest on the E string like this. This reinforces good muting habits, and it'll be useful later if you want to explore more advanced finger style techniques. As you pluck the A string, allow your fingers to follow through and rest on the E string. Together, one, two, three, four. Keep in mind all the aspects we talked about earlier relaxed hands and wrists, plucking with the fleshier parts of your fingers, striking with equal intensity at the same point on the string, and plucking towards your thumb. Again, if you want to keep practicing this section before we move on, please do. For the D string, Move your thumb's anchor point from the neck pickup to the E string. Now the E string is muted by your thumb, so your ring and pinky finger will rest on the A string. Your index and middle finger will pluck the D string, while your left hand mutes the G. Together, one, two, three, four. This hand position might feel odd at first, but try to relax into it. It'll become second nature. For the G string, your thumb's anchor point will move to the A string, and the side of your thumb will rest on the E string. Now you're muting both of these strings with just your thumb. Your ring and pinky finger will rest on the D string, while your index and middle finger pluck the G string and your left hand doesn't need to do any muting. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Again, these hand positions might feel tricky at first, but they'll give you an excellent foundation for any style of music and for however advanced you choose to get with your technique. Now that we've played each string individually, let's play them all in a row to get used to switching the hand positions. Remember to mute any strings that are not being played, and keep a close eye on my picking hand so you can follow it verbatim. Together, one, two, three, E. To A. To D. to G, G 
you again. To D. To A. To E. Let's do it again. E. To A. To D. To G. G again. To D. To A. Very good. We're going to start using more of the left hands now. Find the fifth fret on your bass. You can count one, two, three, four, five, or you can look at the second fret marker and hold down the E string with the fleshy part of your index finger. The best spot to hold down a string is directly behind the fret, right here. This requires the least amount of pressure to keep the string held down. To demonstrate, notice what happens when I keep the pressure constant, but move away from the fret. We get buzz. The buzz goes away if we press harder, but playing precisely with less pressure will allow you to play longer and eventually faster. So find the sweet spot on the fifth fret, then do the same thing on the sixth fret with your middle finger. Again on the seventh fret with your ring finger. And again on the eighth fret with your pinky. As you fret, continue muting the A, D, and G strings by keeping your left hand close to the neck, like this. If your hand is farther from the neck, noise from the other strings can come through and make things sound muddy. Obviously this is an exaggeration, but you'll really notice it when you're playing arenas one day. Now if we use the close fretting technique, the other strings are kept quiet. Let's play this together. One, two, three, four. And we'll loop it. You might be getting some buzzing. That's normal. Just takes practice and we'll get rid of it eventually. If you're getting a lot of buzzing, try playing each note twice. Good! Let's continue this exercise across all strings using the close fretting method and the right hand positions from earlier. One, two, fifth fret E. E again. To A. To D. To G. Again. To D. To A. To E.
There's a lot going on here, so please feel free to pause the video and keep working things out. If you'd like to, you can even go back to the beginning of the finger style section for more practice. Tabs, or tablature, is a form of music notation that enables you to start practicing songs and exercises very quickly. Its simplicity can leave a bit to be desired in terms of music theory, but we're not going to worry about that for now. We just want to hit the ground running with some riffs and practice the mechanics of our instrument. When your bass is laid flat, it looks like this. The E string is at the bottom, followed by the A, D, and G strings. Tablature is laid out the same way. We have four lines, and each of them represent one string of the bass, E, A, D, and G. If we assign a number to each fret, we can then point out any note in any position on the bass guitar. For example, the open string is zero, the first fret is one, the second fret is two, and so on, all the way up the neck. If we see a five here, we know to play the fifth fret on the E string. If we see a 12 here, we know to play the 12th fret on the A string. Now here's where the fun comes in. If we string a few of these together and read them left to right, we can start making music. Take a look at this bass line. Can we make sense of it? We have four open E's, four threes, four twos, followed by two fives, a three, and a two. Let's use your middle finger to fret the threes, your index finger to fret the twos, and your pinky to fret the fives. Remember to press right behind the fret. Let's play it together. One, two, three, four. Again. Very good. Let's play it once more, a little faster, and we'll bring in the rest of the band. One, two, three, four. Again. One more. Awesome. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and you feel excited to keep playing. If you have any questions or anything, let me know in the comments, and make sure you like this video and subscribe for more. Also, don't forget to download the backing track, PDF, and guitar profile for this lesson, linked down below. I'm Nathan Navarro. Thank you for watching.